All right, hello everyone and welcome. I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your day to participate in today's event titled Reporting to Get BPA Sales. This training session is geared towards contractors that have currently have a quarterly sales reporting parent MAS contract. The training will focus on the FAS sales reporting portal file upload feature to report to get sales on a quarterly basis using the provided upload template. We are hosting separate sessions for those with a monthly sales reporting parent contract. Today, we're going to be talking about this session, the quarterly. Uh, today's training is being recorded, so you probably got a notice on your screen. That includes all the chat messages and Q&A questions as well. If you're uncomfortable with that, feel free to drop off and you can watch the recording once it's posted uh, after the event concludes. Uh, speaking of chat and Q&A, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you should see the chat and the Q&A function. My ask is that you use the Q&A feature to ask any questions that you might have of our panel. Uh, doing so is your best bet at getting that question addressed and it ensures that that question gets tracked so that we can respond to it later. If you put it in the chat function, we may overlook it or it may get lost. Uh, one last note, we are hosting, well, it, this is our second session. So if you are at the Tuesday session, this will be a repeat of that. Uh, the sessions will be duplicates, um, but you're welcome to stay here and participate in today's session as well. And that's enough for me. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to the reason we're here, our speaker, uh, Mr. Derek Tribble. Hey, Robin, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Uh, let me share my screen real quick. Okay, can you see that, Robin? Eric, I can okay. see it. I okay, see it. great. Yep. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. Sorry for the delay. We did have a technical issue uh, getting ramped up. Uh, but let's jump right into it. So what we're going to be discussing today is you and your new BPA to get contract and the fact that you have a quarterly reporting parent contract. So there's going to be some things that you're going to need to learn through this new process under the to get BPA, which is different from your quarterly parent mass contract. And my name is Derek Tribble. I'm the business owner for the FAST SRP and along with me today and who will be providing the demo is Don Marcus and he's the program manager for the FAST SRP. What we'll be covering today is just some FAST SRP guidance some of the things that kind of stand out after Don and I have done this for years now uh, that we need to reiterate and, and point out to you, to, you, to you people out in the field industry. Uh, to get BPA file upload, sales reporting, uh, we're gonna go through that. I'm gonna go through a demo with Don showing you how to go in and report uh, zero sales under your to get BPA. Also how to report sales through the file upload under the BPA. He'll also talk about sales adjustments a little bit, and then we'll do um, some IFF payment processing, and we'll touch on some items inside of there. So we, as Robin said earlier, this is the second class for quarterly reporters, and we did two classes on Tuesday, one for contractors who have a monthly reporting parent contract, and then one for quarterly reporting parent contracts. What we learned through those two sessions, I think the biggest thing that kind of kind of came to light was the correct people being on the contract so that the BPA contract is visible in the SRP. Uh, at the end of this, there'll be an email address, fastsrp at gsa.gov, to where if you're logging in under your credential for your quarterly parent mass contract and you're not seeing your to get BPA contract under that same credential, then you'll need to reach out to that address and we will be able to get you added onto that contract. We'll need to know your parent contract number, your to get BPA contract number, and of course the name and email address and that needs to be added into that. And I'll just basically verify that off your parent contract to make sure you're assigned there before I load it onto the BPA contract. So that's kind of the biggest thing that came out of those two sessions uh, that we've had to address to get everyone uh, to get BPA contract visible uh, under the FAST SRP. 
So remember, you can have multiple POCs on the contract. They must be listed on the contract to gain access. That's what we were just talking about, right? So make sure that the people who are on the contract, we're not going to see that inside of the home screen of the FAST SRP. Authentication is based on your email address. So if you provided to get a different email address when during the during the, the process of getting the to get BPA contract, but yet you're using another email address to report sales under your parent contract, then you're pro these two aren't gonna mesh up and you're probably not gonna see that. And that's kind of some of what we've been seeing as well. So make sure you reach out to the FAST SRP at gsa.gov and we will get that straightened out um, relatively quick. There's only been one that we had to roll up as a ticket. Typically I can adjust those and, and get those handled. And then within 48 hours, you'll see that contract pop up on your list. Parent contracts for you on the phone call now, your parent contracts are quarterly reporting. So this is a, a, a change under the two get BPA where you'll be reporting monthly and you'll be reporting through a file uploaded feature. Um, both contracts again should display inside of uh, under the SRP under one login as long as you're listed on both of those contracts. Avoid reporting duplicate sales. That's going to be a big issue. We got to think about right. So you've got sales are either under your parent or they're under your BPA. Can't report them on both contracts or we're going to have to go in and do a bunch of sales adjustments later. So as you're getting these orders in, please make sure you're aware that they either go that they're going to your parent contract or they're going to your BPA contract and they get reported accordingly. File upload is going to be the only accepted submission process for the 2 get BPA program. And Don Marcus is going to walk you through that process as we um, as he does the demo. So you'll see how that upload feature works. The 2 get upload temp template has been designed specifically for this program. Um, what does that mean? It, it is only the contracts on 2 get This template, you can't go grab the generic template off the home page inside of the SRP and use that to upload your sales. You have to upload based on the one that's provided, the 2 get template that's going to be provided to, to you for this contract. The program office is the subject matter expert for the additional reporting items that are beyond column L. So A through L are your traditional TDR, transactional data reporting columns. These are standard features or, and standard requirements under the TDR program. Those we know about, fast SRP at gsa.gov, those Don Marcus and I can assist with if there's any questions that need to be answered. Once you get to column M and beyond, those are the things that program offices require. And we'll show you some, some additional stuff with that on the template as well. They're gonna be the subject matter expert for answering any questions on how to fill out anything out beyond column L. To get BP, BPA file upload. The to get BPA contracts were awarded with a start date of March 31st, 2021. That's what's loaded into our system right now. What does that mean? So now you're under monthly reporting with the to get BPA. It's a monthly file upload. So this means there are currently two reporting periods that need to be completed prior to May 30th, if at all possible. The first one would be the March reporting period. There's only one day in March. So very doubtful you had any sales whatsoever for March. So Don Marcus is gonna walk through the report zero sales button. There is a button, a one click button inside of the UI user interface where you can just click that button uh, and submit that and it'll just report zero sales for that period. He's gonna walk you through that. That's gonna be your best option for March. Log into the system, perform that. April, kind of a toss up. You could have had some sales under your BPN, BPA in April and you might not. If you didn't, you're gonna turn right around after you report March and you're gonna do the exact same thing for April and report zero sales. Now, if you did have sales for April, then of course you're gonna use the template and upload those sales into the system. Uh, and then contractors with quarterly reporting parent contracts will have to report under each contract separately. And the, the reason there's two different statements right here is if you're currently a TDR contractor, which means you currently, your parent monthly reporting contract is already being, you're already uploading that on a file template. You can combine the two together if you're currently a monthly TDR. 
a contractor under the under your parent contract. But since the people on this phone call are quarterly, that means your sales roll up at the SIN level. So you're going to go in and report your parent contract at the SIN level on a quarterly basis. And your to get VPA contract is going to be reported in a, a TDR fashion, which is a monthly, and that's going to be through a file upload. What's the file upload contain? Well, it's an Excel document, first off. Yours is going to contain six tabs. And I have these separated out for a couple of reasons here. The first tab is the instruction tab. It's going to be a guide to completing the report data tab, which is the second tab where all of your information goes. So everything gets loaded into the report data tab. Now, the program office wanted to assist you in your upload, so they asked us to add on four additional tabs, the Advantage Agency Data, VA Station Numbers, Air Force DODAX, and Contracting Office Codes. These four tabs are going to be used to assist you in providing the complete and full upload when you go to do that on a monthly basis. Now, do not change anything inside of this Excel template. That is very important. Do not read the instruction page and delete it. It won't upload. Um, do not change the column headers inside of the report data tab. Do not switch them around or anything along those lines. If you do, when you go to try to upload, it's gonna reject, it's gonna fail. Um, so please don't adjust anything on here, but at the same time, please read the instructions. The instructions give you very, very detailed information about what can go into columns, what can't go into columns, and what's expected to be loaded in those fields as well. So instruction, the instruction um, tab is ex extremely important. Again, do not alter it in any way. It's going to fail to upload. Um, your two good sales reports must be uploaded monthly. So sales reports need to be loaded by the 30th day of each month for the previous month sales. Save these uploads to a folder for your records in case you need to make any adjustments later, which is something that we'll discuss later in the presentation. But the system will have a saved copy. So you can go into the system and download that if you need to. But I just recommend that every time you get a successful upload into a month when you when you report May and it's successful, save that. Title it as May, keep it in a folder somewhere. So that way you can go back and pull it out if you ever need to make any sales adjustments. It'll be just good to have that information available. Program office will be providing the template to be used for the upload. I think they probably actually actually have gotten that out to all the contract holders at this point. If for some reason you do go in and manipulate the template in some way, knowingly, unknowingly, whatever the case, and you save it and you can't figure out what you've done to the template, you'll be able to reach out to the vendor support center. They're going to maintain a copy, a clean copy of a blank to get template. All you will need to let them know is you're a member of the two get BPA, you'll probably have to provide them your, your contract number so they can verify that. And then they'll shoot you out a blank clean template where you can go back in and, and put your information in and then you won't have any template issues from that point. It will be able to load up. So with that, that kind of covers a lot of the housekeeping type items to get us up to the demo point. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it over to Don and Don's gonna walk you through um, Actually, the how to report to zero sales, he's going to walk you through uploading via the file upload feature. He's going to walk you through supporting documentation, and then he'll probably show you some of the locations where the sales adjustments are made as well, or the just data feature that we have in there. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to Don. Thank you, Derek. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, where your location is. I greatly appreciate you joining us today. My name is Don Marcus, and I am the uh, program manager for the FAST SRP. I have been on the system since the uh, since the system started. Okay, uh, I was one of the one of the original. Well, I was the original program manager for the FAST SRP, formerly known as TDR. And you know, I'm going to try to get you through this as seamless as possible as you move forward. I'll show you hiccups. I'll, I'll talk to you about uh, problems you might encounter. Uh, at this time, can you see my, uh, I'm assuming that you see my screen and 
I am showing my landing page of being a, a contractor for a GSA contract. So, you know, like everything, we have the menu on the left-hand side. A lot of us are familiar with it. Um, for the quarterly ones, you're going to have the extra, you're going to have the extra buttons here that you can use. Okay. And I'll, I'll walk through it just a little bit. But before I go into that, I want to explain that, you know, 2 gig has their main help desk, but SRP has primarily the one that you will be interacting for the SRP application would be the vendor support center. So it's a little bit difficult, but the vendor support center is your uh, first way to success of the fast sales reporting portal. Um, I want to go into, and I want, I want to, I want to show you a couple quick features that you can learn from this is, you know, you have contracts and, you know, you, one of the main issues on a contract are understanding what the sins are. And, and they might say one thing upon your uh, actual contract, but coming into the systems, there might be a space or might not be a space, et cetera. For the 2GIT program, you have all your sins and your sins would end in a BP. So, you know, or they, they should end in a BP. And how you check this would be coming into the system and you would be putting in your contract number. This is only checking for sins, okay? You would type in just a number right there, add the order, okay? And then right here, I'm gonna go nice and slow, the two sins, these are the sins that would be located on this particular contract right here. These are the sins that are available. We have the product and we have the service uh, tables, okay? I'll go into that a little bit, you know, when we get to the actual um, template itself. And for the 2GIT two, two program, uh, it might not be important because you only have uh, products, but, you know, like I said, I'm going to give you the, the um, quick tricks on the fast SRP on moving forward, okay? So hopefully that helps you out. So again, to validate your SINs that are on contracts, you would be able to just, again, go into the form entry, put in your contract, the contract that you're going to report by follow-up load, click it, type in a number right there and add order, and then choose your SINs uh, for products and services, okay? So, you know, that's how you check and validate your SINs, all right? The next thing I want to talk about is how to how to report zero sales, okay? So we will go back out of this and I will go to my home screen. I'm gonna go into form entry. So in reference to zero sales, I'm going to pick my contract again. And this is the screen that I'm showing. All you have to do is come over here and where it says reporting zero sales, say yes. But before doing that, I wanna explain that you want to make sure that the reporting period that you're doing it for is correct, okay? And this date over here is the reporting date. This is today's date, okay? So reporting period is critical for you to actually uh, look at and make sure. So all you have to do is select the yes, submit report, and yes, there we go. It's going to go off. We're going to go back. We should be going back to our home page. And here it is, my contract, it was a monthly, I just reported it. And if I wanna go a little bit further in the granular, I can click the hyperlink right there at the contract number. And it tells me my contract, I reported it for March and I reported for this amount. And then I reported it again for uh, April at $0, okay? One other item you can check is how to check who's on the contract. You click the hyperlink one more time and you come here. The individuals located in this box right here, the contractor's point of contact, okay, would be all the individuals that could, from your company, that could report on your particular contract, okay? So I hope that helps you out moving along. Uh, one other way you can do it is, in, is you can come into the program management, view contract details, okay? Since I'm already, already there, I would just have to put in my contract and then it brings up the same exact thing, all right? So I wanna make sure that that 
is understood and, and, and hopefully that helps you along the way. So I need to sh stop sharing my screen and bring up my Excel template. And I'm going to talk through this Excel template as we go. So again, like Mr. Derek Tribble has stated, we have the different tabs at the very bottom, okay? For the quarterly ones, the first time reporting, I highly encourage you to read the full spreadsheet, okay? Uh, the full tab, all right? The critical information you need to understand is the definitions of data fields, okay? And then you have the mandatory TDR fields right here. And then for additional data would be the two GIT. But as we move over to the right here, it talks about are the fields required. It also gives the maximum fields characters. And it also tells you if it's alphanumeric, numeric, how it's supposed to go in there, okay? And that's, that's all we have for that. But if we go down to the definitions, the definitions of the 2GIT program, it's going to come over and give you each and every single data element that they're asking for in addition to the regular TDR, okay? So on your home screen, this is, this is important to understand and this is important for the first couple months to try to get it as much as right as possible. So I'm gonna move down to the report tab, all right? And this is the SRP tab itself. The SRP tab, we're already talking about column A through L. Those are your TDR. And then we have all the two GIT uh, uh, additional data elements over here to the right-hand side. So what I wanna point out is, is there's three validations with this template. The first validation is the contract number and the SIN. If there's something wrong with the contract number or something wrong with the SIN that's being lo loaded on this Excel spreadsheet, it will automatically kick out before it goes to any other validations. Because as we validate the SIN number, this validation step number two is to validate if the SIN number is a product or service or both. Depending on if it's a product, service, or both, depending on which data elements you put into the spreadsheet. Because as a service, you would not be putting in the manufacturer name, okay? So that's something for, uh, for, for providers that are uh, that also have other contracts that could be TDR. So uh, that's the second validation. So if you pass the first one, you pass the second one, the last validation would be the unit of measure by the price, uh, uh, price per unit and your total amount. It validates that. If those three formulas do not uh, are not correct, it will it will uh, fail the third validation. Okay, so those are the steps we've been talking about combining validation two and three, but we can't val uh, combine validation one, two, and three. So I just want to let you know that for your first couple times reporting, you might you might get a lot of rejections. And those are the reasons why you would get the rejections. And like I said, the SIN number that's on the contract, you go back to your, uh, you go back to your um, form entry a report, you validate what, what SIN is on the contract. Because currently uh, there's, a, there's a few contracts that have an issue with SIN number 54151BP and after this meeting, Nicole's going to reach out to those affected vendors. Uh, we're not going to talk about who they are here to have them, but Nicole will personally reach out to each one and let them know how to move forward, okay? So we've talked about how to report zero sales. We've talked about how to validate the SIN itself. We've talked about the template, okay? We, we have these additional uh, tab tabs at the bottom that the program office would be able to help you out further because this is how they need the information to be provided. And again, they're the subject matter experts on this. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to close my window. I'm going to bring up the FAST SRP. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to upload uh, the Excel document, your, your file, for this program. You would go into the menu, go to reporting. You would do file upload. When you do file upload, I wanna point this out. The last history that has been done within the system for different contracts that you could be assigned, et cetera, 
would be history right here. Okay. And as you can see, I do have some no, adjustments. No, excuse me. Yes, sir. Don't see your screen. Don't see your screen. Yet. Thank you, sir. So I will go back to my home and I thank you, Derek. Can you see it now, sir? Yes. Okay. So I'm on my home screen. I'm going to do my file upload. I'm going to complete my file upload function. I'm going to expand my bar. I'm going to go down to reporting. I want to do file upload. As I'm looking at file upload, this gives me the history of the last file uploads I've done. And we talked about rejection messages. Here's the primary example of a rejection message. And it's going to tell you the total price is invalid. It's going to tell you exactly what row you're having an issue with. Okay. You're able to print this. In addition, uh, on the next one, you see, I have all these problems with the SIN. They're invalid. Okay. It tells me every single row. row. And then my final one, rejection message number one, is I had the SIN missing. Okay. In addition to these error messages, an email, if you get a rejection, you will get an email, whoever is uploading it, letting you know that there was an issue with this uh, file, okay? And that it was not accepted. So just wanna let you know that in case you try to upload it and it's a long processing, normally, you know, a million rows can be up uh, processed in a minute, but if you're moving around within the system, it could, you know, you might not come back to the screen or you might get called away. So if it gets rejected, uh, the system will send you an email rejection message. Then you can come in here and see what the rejections are. So how do I report? I'm going to come down and I'm going to re select a reporting period. As the UI showed, I've already reported for March and I've already reported for April 2017. So my next one I have to do is May, okay? May of 2017, I select my reporting period. I'm going to browse. I'm going to get my contract. I'm going to upload. I will, as you can see right here, I can't press the submit. I need to check my box saying this is true, accurate as much as possible, and that my OLM sends are not 33% of my order. I'm, this, the submit button appears. I press submit, it goes away, so it tells me thank you. And as you can see right here, it says in progress. So how you wanna refresh it is just press refresh. As you can see, it's been submitted. I can go back to my homepage. And as you can see, my outstanding went up and I've reported for May of 2017. That is how to report using the file upload. So we've talked about Reporting zero sales, we talked about validation of sins, we've talked about the template itself, gave you different validations within there, and then we loaded the template. So I want to point out here is if you ever misplace your template, okay, you can click on the contract and you can come in this period here. You can click your oval, and this is for adjustments, okay? Or if you need to pull it up because you're getting a, a IOA assessment visit or you, you have a question from your finance, okay? You can view the data, all right? It comes up on the UI, but it, you're only seeing the TDR fields itself, okay? And after 250 lines, you won't see it, okay? It's gonna tell you there's too many. You see the button right here, it says download. And here's the file that I just uploaded that the system held for me, okay? So, you know, this is a way that, this is a way that, that you can also maintain a copy. Uh, there's two places for copies, one in your office and the other one within the system. And then you just come in here and you just make your corrections for whatever you would need to do for a sales adjustment. Uh, Derek will talk a little bit more about sales adjustments. I don't wanna confuse you, but this is how you could pull up your form, okay? Uh, probably not sharing that. So let me stop. You see, I'm doing the download sales adjustment. And I'm going to show you my template that just popped up for me. Okay, so here's the template that would just pop up for me. Just wanted to point that out. 
I'm going to stop sharing and go back to the system. And I want to show you how to upload supporting documentation and the reason for that feature we have within the FAST SRP. So I'm going to go back to my home screen. And for programs that have additional reporting items, like they might have to submit an energy efficiency report or, or their quarterly review or however it is, whatever contractually that you have to submit for your contract outside the template itself, you could always upload it and have, a, have what I call a, a filing cabinet between you and your, your CO community, okay? The only ones that can see what we're gonna do is the individuals from your company who are on the contract and also for the GSA people who administer your contract. And that's again, right here, we're gonna go into there. We went to program management. We went to view contract details. I put the contract number. So what I'm going to show you next is the only individuals that could be is who's in this box here and the GSA points of contacts here. Those are the only ones that can actually see what we're going to do next. Okay. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to, I want to submit supporting documentation. I go to report. I go to manage supporting documentation. I will go ahead and I will put in my contract number. The one thing about my contract number about this function is you have to report for that particular month before you can attach supporting documentation. So we've already reported for March, April, and May. Those should be the only reporting periods that show up here. So if you haven't reported yet, you're not gonna be able to attach anything. So the, the business rule is report, and then report your TDR uh, items, and then you can attach. So I'm gonna attach for May, select. I'm going to browse my desktop or wherever I have it at. This is a variance report, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put May 2017 variance report. I'm gonna come here and upload it. And then here it is, it's inside where only those individuals can look at it. Now I can make sure I brought up my correct item by clicking it, it would come up in a different window. And I have the ability to delete it if I accidentally upload something wrong, okay? This is one way to cut down on email and it's another way to uh, uh, file things to make it easier for both the company and for the CEO community. On that, Derek, I thank you. I am done with my demo and I'm passing it back to you, sir. Okay, thanks, Bob. Let me share my screen real quick. And remember, I know Don just shared a lot of information with you all. So um, if you have any questions in regards to any of that, please uh, type that into the Q&A tab or, or window and we will read those out and address those uh, at the end of this because we only got a couple of minutes uh, of presentation left and then we can address any questions that you might have. So let's talk about sales adjustments or just file data. Um, I think that's what it's called inside of the system. Basically it all rolls up into a sales adjustment. If you've got quarterly reporting contracts, you understand sales adjustments to some degree. You probably know how and you probably performed some in the past. Um, this is why we were talking about maintaining a copy or you've got the copy online, right, um, on the system itself for that report period. But this is also maintaining a copy for your own records. You can use either one of these two. You can go into the system and download if you need to make a sales adjustment or you can use the one that you would save. Uh, the sales adjustment process is a change to the original file upload. And what that means is don't submit deltas for sales numbers. So if you've reported $100,000 and you find an order that you need to report, which is worth $1,000, don't go upload a file for that $1,000 for that report period. And the reason that is, is because it's a complete overwrite of your original submission. So in that case, you originally had $100,000, you need to report another sale, which adds up to an additional $1,000 then you're gonna have 
$1,000 that you need to report. Uh, so everything gets uploaded because it's a complete overwrite. It just takes your original submission and basically just wipes it out and, and puts this one on top of it. So just be aware of that when you go in to do sales adjustments, that it is a, uh, it's not a delta change, it's a complete overwrite. And the last thing that I really want to cover is payments. And the reason I want to go over these is you're currently in the system already. You're currently making industrial funding fee payments right now. But there's a couple of methods that you might not be aware of. So we like to bring these up uh, when we do presentations like this to give you a little bit more flexibility possibly in the ways that you make payments. Uh, the first one's credit cards. There's a limit on credit cards. It's $24,999.99 that is per day per card per contract. So you can't go in and split those over multiple days. The system will not allow you to do that. Because when you hit pay and you go into pay.gov, it's it's that total payment. So you can't split those payments out with a credit card. Now there's a neat feature that a lot of people don't know about is if your company has a debit card, then you can utilize a debit card with no limit. Uh, the selection inside of pay.gov is the credit card selection. It's when you type in the number, the system realizes it's a debit card and it does not cap you out on that $24,999. It allows you to put in more money and allows the payment to go through. Another method, which a, a lot of the larger contracts who were paying large amounts of IFF are familiar with was ACH. We still have that available. There's no limit on ACH. Um, some people like it, some people don't. And the, the, the kind of big thing behind ACH is the government is pulling money out of your account. So the government comes in, gets that money on, at a specific day or time and pulls it out and takes it. A lot of people don't like that because they're allowing the government into their bank account to pull money out, right? I don't know, neither here nor there. But that's the way ACH works, still available. PayPal is also on the system, $10,000 per day per contract limit for PayPal. Got lower amounts of IFF and you want to utilize that, feel free. And another one that I don't think a lot of people know about is what we call Rex. It's kind of like ACH, has no limit, but it functions like your bill pay. Like you go into your bank account every month and pay your electric bill and you say how much you're paying and you say what day you're paying it on. And then your bank pushes that money out over to the electric company to, to take in for payment. Well, that's how Rex works. Um, it, it allows you the flexibility to push that money when you want to push that money out of your account. So if you're interested in Rex, please feel free to shoot an email over to me at fastsrp at gsa.gov. And I will send you out a package with a POC, uh, with some POC information listed inside of there with our finance people. And they can help get that established within your company and then you can utilize Rex uh, to make those industrial funding fee payments. Payments can't be combined between your parent and your BPA. Each is a standalone contract. So that means when you go and report your sales on your quarterly uh, parent mass contract, you're going to have fees due for that contract. You're going to have to pay those fees. Same applies for your BPA when you go in there uh, to report the sales on your BPA, then you're going to have to pay those fees uh, on your BPA contract. There's a difference now. Now, this is something that's new. So be aware of this now that you have a monthly reporting contract. You, traditionally, you have your parent mass contract, which you report quarterly, pay quarterly. Contracts that report monthly have the option to pay IFF monthly. And it's mandatory you pay quarterly. So now with your two get BPA contract, you'll be uploading sales on a monthly basis. You have the option to pay that IFF on a monthly basis as well. If you do not pay it, that IFF rolls up and it becomes due and delinquent based on quarterly. Just the same, it's the same quarterly as your traditional um, quarterly reporting parent contract. It's just, we allow you the option to pay those IFF fees on a monthly basis if you want to. Some people do, right? Some people like that because it keeps it below a certain limit and then that way they can utilize different payment methods to actually pay that instead of waiting for it to roll up into a quarterly when now all of a sudden it's become a much larger number and you're 
you're you're more limited on the options you can use to pay that industrial funding for. So uh, just some just some things on payments that you might not be aware of that hopefully will help out. So last but not least, how do you reach out? How do you get in touch with us uh, if you have any questions or if you have any problems? General questions about the FAST SRP, your POCs on the contract, general questions about how the system functions or works. This can be sent over to FASTSRP at gsa.gov. Now, if you've got technical questions, say you're trying to upload an Excel document, can't get it uploaded, and keeps giving you an error message, then I would suggest making some screenshots to that error message, reach out directly to the Vendor Support Center and their contact information is on here. The reason I say don't send that over to fastsrp or at gsa.gov because we're not the technical side of the house. We're not going to know how to solve those intricacies and those little problems that you might have with an Excel upload. Uh, the vendor support center is going to be able to look at that. They're going to be able to assess it and then figure out if it needs to be routed up to another tier. And if it does, then it's going to go directly over to our technical team for the fast SRP. They can address that issue get that get that corrective action back out to the vendor support center or reach directly back out to you as a contractor to provide that support to get you to get you to where you can upload that tip or correct any other technical problems you might be having. No, also note there's web-based training located on the FAST SRP homepage under the help section, which is up in the very top right hand side of the screen. Um, so go there. There's some tutorials there that you can watch that are really good, little short tutorials on how to report sales, how to make adjustments, things of that nature. Um, and then if you need to speak with the program office, the program office has already sent out, they, Nicole and them have already sent out an email address, which is a general um, box for the program office itself where you need to be replying and sending all of your questions directly into that box uh, for them to to pass out and to get answers back to you. Um, now with that, we've got two uh, questions that I see right now and we'll answer both of these live. I'll, I'll read them off. The first one I'm gonna read off and then I'm gonna pass it over to the program office because I feel they're probably the best ones to answer this. And the first one is, are columns beyond column L mandatory or quote, best effort? And I'll probably turn it over to Patrick. Best, best effort um, is the best way to is a good way to describe it. Um, I mean, we want we want columns beyond L um, to be as complete as possible. So provide as much information as you can. Um, we understand that you know based determined you know how you how you recognize a sale and when you recognize a sale is going to determine when you report that and all of that information may not be available um, when you when you realize the sale. Um, and some of that information may not be available, um, you know, in the documentation you receive from the ordering agency. So um, we understand that, but we want the information as complete as possible um, at the time that you report it. Thanks, Patrick. Next question that we have, uh, what is the link to the recorded replay of the webinar? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to send those out. So there's Q&A in here, which of course we're going through right now. Some of the Q&A from some of the earlier sessions, we typed in some of the answers that we had. So after all these have wrapped up, uh, there'll be the slides that we went through on here. There's going to be the webinar and there's going to be the answers to all the Q&A. Uh, we're going to roll those up and we're going to pass those back over to the program office. And then they'll also have a list of email addresses of all the attendees and then they can pass that information out to who attended all of these classes and get that out to you guys. So you'll have a copy of this for your files and that way you can go back and watch it at a later time. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and answer that next question too. So included- okay, let, me, let, me, let me read it off real quick, Patrick, just so okay. we got it. Um, where can we find a copy of the two get specific reporting template? The only one we have available to download on the SRP site is the generic reporting template. Yep, so we'll send out a copy of the it so it was a, a copy of the template was included in the solicitation um, called category management report um, as an as an attachment to to the solicitation but we will also send out a copy with the answers to um, the the q a session that we had a couple of weeks ago and 
alongside uh, the link to this webinar and the slides that go out with it. So we'll send a copy of it out to everybody that attended today. Okay, thanks, Patrick. And we've got one more about when will the recording be sent out. Um, and I, I'll, I'll throw in a little bit on this and then I'll kind of turn it over to the program offices. You're going to have to allow us uh, probably till middle of next week to have all of this wrapped up. And what I mean by wrapped up is uh, the Robin, who's the host, has to package all this together with the slides, the recording, and then the Q&A, and then the list of all the attendees. Once all that's put together, um, we will be passing that over to Nicole at the program side, and I'll let them answer on, I guess, about the time frame on when they plan on, plan on sending all that out. Yeah, and in the meantime, programmatically, I know we're coming up against the end of a month. If you need a copy of the reporting template, you can send an email to 2 get quoters. That's 2GITQUOTERS at gsa.gov. Um, and they'll, that email address is a generic inbox, but it's monitored by, by the program office. We'll get, we'll get the copy of the um, template out to you as fast as we can. Yeah, and then I'm sure they'll get the recordings out as soon as we send them over there to them. So don't look for, I, I would say at the earliest, probably end of next week, before you would see any of that information come out. It's gonna take us a while to put the, the four packages together and then send them over to Nicole and her group over there in the program office. Does anybody have any additional questions? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Nicole. Uh, regarding the template, everyone should have received the template as of, I believe, yes. Tuesday morning. Tuesday. So if you have not received that um, as of Tuesday morning, please shoot me an email. But on every vendor, well, every BPA holder had a set of points of contact, whether they were the overall BPA management um, POC or if they were the reporting POC. If they were designated as those people, one of those people, they received a copy of um, of that template. If not, you can reach out to your overall BPA point, uh, point of contact for your company. Um, if they do not have it, I will willingly go ahead and send out the email again and with all the information in it um, so that you have a copy of it. But you, uh, everyone should have already received it as of Monday. I'm sorry, as of Tuesday. Great, thanks, Nicole. And again, that's gonna, let's go back to this. So let's make sure we cover this one more time because this is kind of what we saw out of the first one, uh, out of the first two sessions we had is from the, from, from the contractor standpoint, you guys and gals log in to Fast SRP and look and see if you see your BPA, to get BPA contract along with your parent mass contract. If you don't, 99.5% chance there is an email issue. And by what I mean by that is you're not listed on the to get BPA contract. Not saying we can't fix that, we can in several different ways. But if that is the case and you do not see it, please pull your email up, grab fast SRP at gsa.gov. Shoot, and that, that's going to come to me, right? There's other people on there, but I'm primarily the one that's going to address the question. Um, it is put in the parent contract number again, put in the two gate BPA contract number, put in the issue you're having, like, hey, I don't see this contract, it's not showing up in my list, and I or whoever needs to, to be able to see this contract and make sure you list their, their name, first and last name in their accurate email address. And again, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look at the parent contract first, make sure they're listed on there. And then I'm gonna turn around and I wanna add them to the BPA contract. I have a way with a couple of different items where I can go in and put one maximum of two people onto a contract so that it gets done in, in a quick turnaround, let's put it that way, in a quick turnaround time mm -hmm. to where typically you will see it the next day. So if you send it over to me right after this meeting, and I load it before six or seven o'clock tonight, you're typically gonna see that contract pop up when you, when you get into work the next morning and it's gonna be in your list. So make sure you're logging in, make sure you're taking a look at it. 
And then from that point, once you're into that contract, go ahead, look at your March, look at your April, and take some actions on those two periods. March, 99.9% .9 chance you're reporting zero. Follow what Don showed you, go in and click the zero sales button, submit it, and March is taken care of. And then again, April's up in the air based upon if you had sales or not. If you didn't, super simple. Go in there and click the button again, report April, you're caught up. That gets you to the point of where now you can breathe a little bit, get some sales up under your belt and be ready to upload for the next report cycle. So with that, unless you, unless anybody has any additional questions and I haven't seen any pop into the Q&A, um, that's all I have for the presentation. Um, I wanna thank everybody for joining. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. We're more than welcome to assist and we're here to assist you. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you so much for attending.